Shadowy flight. A sh shadowy flight. Knight Rider. A shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. <laughs> Dad said, Watch this. It's a car that can talk. They'll love it. I am the voice of Knight Industry 2000. What's that car? What's that car? the fastest, safest, strongest car in the world. He solved crimes with the help of his talking car, was it? And did the car turn into a plane? No. It was four years of non-stop rock and roll, balls out fun. Men and cars. No. Michael Knight, a young loner on a crusade to champion the cause of the innocent, the helpless, the powerless, in a world of criminals who operate above the law. David Ass, I'm not gonna ask off David. Welcome aboard the Knight 2000. Thank you. What's all this? Looks like Darth Vader's bathroom. In order to motivate it forward, I recognize the more rudimentary controls, such as the accelerator, Devon. I do know how to drive. In the very beginning, when I saw the script, I knew that it was a monster hit. I just knew it. I called my father, and I said, I've just been handed a script about a talking car. And he says, what are you, out of your mind? We used a Pontiac, the very latest model. It just had a great look to begin with. We didn't have to do a lot to it. I mean, we put the little eye in, but um, I borrowed that from Battlestar Galactica, so remember the Cylons? <laughs> I don't waste anything. You look at that car now, you think, that car's crap. At the time, it was looked like a really good car. It looked really cool. But now you think, oh, my Honda Civic is better than that. The relationship really started when David fell asleep while driving on his first assignment. The highway patrol goes by and sees, you know, I believe that man was asleep at the wheel. What the? What's going on? What did I do? Deny everything. My relationship with the car was that the car was smarter than me. If I may suggest, deafness is always a good approach to law enforcement officers. You shut up. It was a cocky thing, that kit was very cocky, though. Michael, I really don't think you should do that, Michael. No, Michael, you're not supposed to do that. I think you should shut the door and put your seatbelt on, Michael. I'm the clever one here, Michael. Michael, look to your left, look to your right, Michael. Michael, scratch your ass. What do you want from me? A little consideration would be a beginning. I am very, very grateful to you. <laughs> The car used to go forward, go backwards on its own, do a three-point whatever turn on its own. I used to watch that thinking, if you look really closely, hopefully you might be able to see someone's hands on the wheel. There, driving it like this, trying to hide under the dashboard. What would happen if an irresistible force met an immovable object? That car did a lot. It would chat women up. Wow. Chow the G-string off me here. Babe? Bonnie, unless I'm mistaken, you seem to be repositioning my main power booster. What a car. Uh, yes. You take the XR3, I'll take Kit. Under the overall, she's 168 centimeters tall, 54 kilos in weight. Other measurements? Kit. Yes, Michael. Shut up. I couldn't really empathize with Michael Knight because he had a really cool car, and at the time, my dad was driving a an orange Talbot Alpine with a black vinyl roof, which didn't really have the same sort of, you know, Michael, it's time for us to do some crime fighting, you know, where's the Talbot Alpine? Uh, uh. That was about it, really. General Motors was so impressed and thrilled with the kind of coverage they were getting that they decided they might put out a kit 2000 and uh, actually release a model of the Pontiac that was the Knight Rider car. And some guy down in New Orleans got the idea to jump a train with the one he had. 
and uh, the General Motors board got to thinking that, you know, maybe there'd be more liability in having this on the road than not. So it stopped there. I didn't do very many of the jumps. They wouldn't allow me to do that, but I did a lot of my own driving because I wanted to and because I got really good at it. Be careful. We like to do all of our stuff ourselves. But, uh, you know, it's, if every actor says he does all of his own stunts, he's lying. It's a show that men naturally came to because of this sort of love affair with cars. And uh, I would have to believe that a lot of women liked watching David. A four-year-old child could watch it and fall in love with Michael Knight because he was a hero. The women could watch it because they loved the car. They loved me when I was 20 years younger. <laughs> uh, how many is the invitation for? Two. Interested? Wouldn't miss it for the world. Good. The guys liked it because it was rock and roll, baby. I was Knight Rider, man. I was wearing black and I was hip and I was cool. It was the American James Bond. I wanted to be the first guy who wore black and, and actually was a hero. So I, I opted for black leather. Big buckle belt, trousers kind of semi flares with that leather jerkin. Bit elastic around the bottom, zip up, decent sized collar. Maybe that jacket should be called the Hasselhoff, because it kind of sums him up, doesn't it? David Hasselhoff was really quite dishy then. He thought, oh, he's all right. Might get in a car with him. And then I heard his album. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> had a hit record in Austria. A girl had come to meet me from a magazine. She said, oh, my, your record Night Rocker is number one in Austria. I said, where is Austria? And she showed me on the map, and I said, hmm. Let's fly away. I am a night rocker. Four weeks from that conversation, I was on tour and drew more people than the Rolling Stones. And it just went berserk. I've been looking for In Germany, looking for freedom, it was number one for eight weeks. David Hasselhoff is here. And the Berlin Wall came down, and they chose my song as the national anthem. So in 1989, I sang to a million people on the Berlin Wall. I got 40 gold and platinum records now on my wall because of that little Knight Rider car. Ein Auto, ein Computer, ein Mann. It aired every place that you make any appreciable money. El Coche Fantástico. It was enormously successful. I'm sure Mr. Hasselhoff would say he was the star of the show, and uh, General Motors probably thinks the Pontiac was, but... Uh, they were a successful team. It was perfect for its time. Is this a car or a spaceship? I believe that the camera photographs your aura. Can you take a direct hit, kid? I don't think we want to find that out. I was that character. I wasn't as brave as Michael Knight, but I had a heart like Michael Knight. I still do. And I think the people respond to that. They might walk on the street with me one block with me, and you will see the reaction. It's like they, they everybody knows me as their bud. was able to affect people all over the world in whatever language. People need heroes. People need dads. 